Dr. Ronald Lent from the Canadian Network for International Surgery. We're on to lesson three on our series on minor surgery. With this lesson, we're going to look at surgical instrument handling and surgical knot tying. Instrument handling. The principles are uniform irrespective of the type of instrument. The issue is control. And the major issue is three-point control. Here I have the needle holder, my thumb, my fourth finger, and my index finger are controlling the management and the movement of the tip of that needle holder. It's true of the Adson forcep. My thumb, my index finger, and my third finger control it. The artery forcep. Fourth finger, thumb, index finger, so you grasp that vessel appropriately and skillfully. When you're dissecting, your Metzenbaum scissors. Again, thumb, fourth finger, index finger to make sure you know where the tip of that instrument is. It's true of the scalpel. Thumb, third finger, index finger controlling the tip, you know what you're cutting and you control what you're cutting. One problem you can have is past pointing. For example, with your suture scissors, you don't cut back here where in the jaw, you cut in the forward part of the jaw so that you don't grasp tissue that wasn't intended to be cut. If you go too far forward, it's called past pointing. Another issue of pass pointing has to do with holding the needle. How do you hold the needle? Okay, we have a large needle here. You take your needle holder. If you want power, you put it in the middle, 50-50. If you want a little bit more speed, you go backwards, two-thirds, one-third. But what you don't do is grasp in the middle of your instrument. Again, you're past pointing. If you're trying to do something, your needle holder will be in the way of where you want to put your needle. One other issue with instrument handling. Here we have a number three scalpel handle. The scalpel handle of this size will hold either a number 10 blade or a number 15 blade. So you need to know how to put that blade on your scalpel handle. You want to do it safely. You cover the edge of the blade with your needle holder. You then line up the bevels. You can see here, my bevels are not lined up. There's a bevel here on the handle and a bevel on the blade. So I have to turn my blade over so that the bevels are in the same direction. We then slip them together. So we have the number 10 blade on the number 3 handle. When we want to remove it, we turn it over, we grasp it, and it slips off. Let's review this with the number 15 blade. Again, Cover the blade so you don't hurt yourself. Line up the bevels. Slip it on. After you finish the procedure, turn it over, take it off in the opposite direction from yourself so that you're not cutting yourself. So this is the basis of handling instruments. Three-point control, no past pointing, Make sure you're careful when you're removing or putting on scalpel blades. We are now going to start looking at surgical instrument tying. Okay, this is the most useful way of tying knots when you're doing minor procedures. So we won't review the other types of knot tying on this lesson. We will stick to instrument tying. I'm going to start with a string. I would like you to consider this area of the field 
as sterile. You have to start thinking about sterile technique. So I'm wearing gloves. I've got a string as a suture. You can see it has a white limb and a blue limb so that you can see things. Now, you do a throw and a second throw. Now I'm going to go back. Before you do a throw, you have to think about things. The suture has two limbs and it's in the shape of a V and you always do your tying from within the V. So with my instrument is within the V. I do one throw, I do two throws. I grasp the other limb and I cross my hands. So you can see it lying down flat. The double throw is the only time you do that is on the first time. We now have a new V, okay? in the opposite direction. My instrument's inside the V. I do one throw. I grasp the other limb. I cross my hands. And I now have a square knot. The knot you would have done when you were a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout. You want to do it at least four times. Cross your hands. Always inside the V. Inside the V, do a wrap. Cross your hands. That is a surgical knot. You can see every one of those is square. You then take your suture scissors, you leave longish ends so that it won't come untied. There is the demonstration with string of a surgical knot. We're going to do two more demonstrations of instrument ties. Here I have a number two suture, so it's almost like string, it's big. If you notice when I'm pulling on the suture, I'm getting rid of the memory, which can be annoying. The memory that comes from it being in the package. I'm going to grasp the needle at the junction of two-thirds and one-third. I'm going to take my ats and forceps, pick up the end of what I want to grab, so put my needle through there pick up the other side. Take my needle holder, turn the needle so that it's in the direction of the needle. Now we have a V again. So inside the V, two wraps on the first knot. Inside the V, one wrap. Inside the V, one wrap. Inside the V, cross your hands, another wrap. Again, you need to cut the suture. If you cross your hands and lay it down properly, those same knots that you can easily see on the string are also square and on the suture. One more demonstration. I'm going to use a cutting suture, a polypropylene. So it is a lot finer, a lot more realistic to what you'll be doing in minor surgery. This is 3.0. It's a good size for minor surgery. Again, I grasp it at the junction of one third and two thirds. I pull it out. I see there's still some memory. Sometimes it's hard to get rid of all the memory. Then, just like you did with the other ones, I grasp one side of the tissue, the other side. Hold the needle with the needle, with the Atsin forcep, grasp it with the needle holder. It fell down, sometimes that happens. Then you just have to get a hold of it. Rotate it in the curve of the needle. You have your two limbs inside the V. Two wraps. It almost pulled out. Cross your hands. Okay, you can see it's caught there. I pull it out. 
inside the V, grasp it. Now polypropylene comes untied easily, so you may want to put more than four knots on inside the V, but once you get on a roll it's not hard to put a lot of knots on and you don't want it to come out, come undone. So this is your instrument tie. A lot of people find it easy to do. A lot of people don't do it right. And the major mistake they do is that they don't keep their instrument inside the V. If you keep your instrument inside the V and you cross your hands, you will get a square knot which will be secure. A knot that's not secure is dangerous for the patient's life. A knot that's secure promotes healing and allows the patient to survive your procedure. So, instrument tying is critical for minor surgery. If you can do that, you're ready to do procedures. And that's what will happen in lesson four and five. Thank you for watching and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and be sure to subscribe and like us on YouTube. If you would like more information about CNIS or on how to become our member, please go to www.cnis.ca.